Oh, hello guys and girls. Well, hopefully some girls watching. Uh, it's been a long winded and time consuming in terms of elapsed hours, not necessarily my input, but uh, testing this thing and trying to find out what's going on. Got some interesting results. I'm not sure we can draw any conclusions. This is part three. If you haven't seen parts one and two leading up to this part three, then maybe there is a playlist on this channel actually, which is the Noco Genius 5 playlist, and it's incorporated with the testing of a slightly failed uh, Halfords 50 amp hour HCB012 calcium battery. It's about three years old that fails because it starts the cars and runs. The cars run uh, every day, but leave the lights on 15 minutes, it won't start. So it's got no capacity to speak of. Um, that. Uh, is much lower so it's not safe really to go around because it can strand you so uh, battery's been changed in the car. car the battery came straight out of the car and then we've been doing these tests so see parts one and two if you want to have a recap right now interesting results actually um, I've been using the repair mode which is that one there oh, this mode here I've been running the repair mode off and on and it is a strange thing really because um, it says it lasts up to 12 hours but I've been running the repair mode and I can hear it ticking tick 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 when I'm working and I've been taking a note of how long the repair mode lasted for and of course the repair mode is supposed to be according to the manual uh, switched on when the batteries have received and completed a full charge from the Noco Genius 5 so that's what I've been doing and the repair mode has consistently lasted about four hours so after four hours the ticking stops. If you want to see the current waveforms and the voltage waveforms look at part two. Um, this is part three. Um, I was going to incorporate this um, the complete teardown and, and a parametric test into part three but this has taken so long and people are chasing me now so I'm going to go for the uh, to explain what's happened here with this charge setup and the results we've received and you might have to draw your own conclusions actually because I'm not quite sure I fully understand what's going on. I no doubt some pundits out there amongst you will be able to fill me in on the details. Leave your comments down below. I'm trying to incorporate anything and everything that would reasonably, um, sorry, try to incorporate anything and everything that's been asked for that is reasonable and time efficient for me to do. Can't do everything but I've tried to answer a lot of questions already by what I've done. So you know the setups here and the power meters up there and then no hours are up there you know it's a proper test I'm a chartered engineer so yeah so let's switch to the scope and we'll do a quick review of the test results of what's happened using these modes and I'll talk a bit about the modes and the observations and then you can decide what you think all right so let's have a look at the results I've done I've changed some of the terminologies here from recondition I called it repair mode uh, and you'll see a few other things. I'm changing the sign of the drop, but generally the information, well, actually the technical information is the same. It's just the presentation has changed to make it a bit more legible, really. As I've learned things, I've decided to do things slightly differently. Now, you can see the first three charges, first three charges were done with the Audi Auto Access battery charger, and it was a charge discharge, so charge for 24 hours, 10 amp discharge current, when the battery terminal voltage read 10.6, stop the charge and record the amp hour capacity uh, withdrawn from the battery to lower the terminal voltage to there under a 10 amp load. And also there's a thing like the release voltage, which was the voltage of the, the uh, across the battery terminals an hour after the test and the average ambient temperature for the test as measured by my temperature meter. Right, so anyway, look, there's the three. We've been through this before and the detail, but you can see generally, just to summarize, on each of the charge discharge cycles, we got a drop in the amp average or the capacity of the battery. First time it was minus 1.19, then it was minus 0.54, then it was minus 1.59. And the percentage drop in capacity we measured under these test conditions were all measured there, okay? So all indicated there. <clears throat> So then we switch to the Noco Genius 5. Noco Genius 5, charge is charged the same, same conditions, 24 hour charge, blah, blah, blah. And we got a capacity of 22.1 amp hours from the battery, which was the biggest drop actually when we switched over from the Audi, Audi, the Audi, can't say it, 
Audi Auto XS, the Knockout Genius 5, we've got a 6.7% drop, which is quite significant. But we haven't done this test. We can't really draw many conclusions from that because we haven't, you know, repeatedly charged and discharged this battery to see whether this is a general trend with the same charger. But we should be able to draw some com um, conclusions from what happened next. So next we had the we ran the repair mode, Knocko Genius 5, and at the end of the video we were just started to run the repair mode and I sat beside it and it terminated after about four hours, you can see there, four hours, right? So after four hours it terminated, I could hear the tick, tick, tick every two seconds and it stopped. And so then I uh, let it settle for an hour and then I did the discharge test again, which is the same discharge test you can see here discharge only using the battery tester and we got a capacity of 21.74 which is smaller than the other drops actually it wasn't a massive increase in capacity as we we're hoping from discharge but we got a minus 0.36 amp hour drop which is as small as one of those so it could be a statistical aberration it might have been 21 or something if we hadn't run the discharge who knows but we didn't see we hadn't run the repair, should I say. Uh, we didn't see a huge difference, a huge difference in the repair mode, okay? Although it did tick, 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 tick for four hours. If you want to see the repair pulse, it's in the previous video, okay? Now, what did we do next? What did we do next? We did. We then, all right, so we just charged it, 24-hour charge to bring the charge back up. And then what I did is I ran the repair mode. Here we are, look. You can see again now, I ran the repair mode twice. So it went for four hours, stopped. I left it for an hour or so. Then I ran the repair mode twice. I think my thinking, twice repair mode, twice the improvement or not? Well, actually happens, the answer is, or not. Because the discharge of that, that um, charge and repair mode combination, charge and two repair modes, or charge and two repair cycles, gave us 21.2. Uh, so we still had a half percent drop in capacity, which is equivalent to one up here, look. All right, so it didn't seem to, the repair mode didn't seem to be doing anything to this battery at all, apart from possibly, we've got no sense of confidence in it, but it might have just improved it by a few percent. And it was a few percent less than it would have lost had we not done it. That's the conclusions, be a reasonable conclusion to draw from these results, but not one that's going to be cast in uh, cast in stone because it's uh, you know statistics and all that can prove anything right so and then um, a couple of people have come back and said well the standard uh, auto association test for a starter battery is to run it down to 10.6 volts or 10.5 I chose 10.6 not to be so unkind to the battery at a current a discharge current of 2.5 amps so then I ran a test with a 2.5 amps discharge current. So I charged it 24 hours, then I put it on to discharge at 2.5 amp hours. Instead of the 10 amp discharge, we got the 2.5. Termination voltage the same, and this time we got 30.1 amp hours. So the moral of that story is if you discharge a lower current, then you can draw, it takes longer for the battery terminal voltages to drop to 10.6. So there's a lot more discharging going, a lot more lead sulfate being deposited on the plates and a lot more potential damage to the battery, okay? However, <laughs> as I thought, so I then um, thought, okay, so we've got 30.1 amp hours. The voltage was pretty much, is that right? Yeah, it was, 11.21. Yeah, so we've got 30.1 amp hours. And I haven't filled these columns in because it was a different test and it wouldn't be sensible to draw any conclusions from this. This is pretty much as as expected. It, you'd expect at a lower discharge current to get more of the capacity of the battery out in terms of uh, amp hours because the internal impedance of the battery increases as it gets flatter. And with the 10 amp load flowing across the internal resistance, the terminal voltage will drop faster. But that was that. And I thought, okay, so now I thought, what should I do now? I'll, cha I'll charge it up again. So... I put the Noco Genius 5 onto charge to this battery that just given out 30.1 amp hours power uh, capacity. What happened was that the charge, first part of the charge, up until the final light, was pretty normal. 
But then the green light came on, and I think it's the absorption charge. We'll find out what it's doing during that stage when we go into the parametric testing, probably in the next video, okay? But what happened was that it actually does this pulsing thing. The light pulses on and off, saying it's completing the charge. It hasn't completing the charge yet. So you have to wait till that green light at the last, the last green, large green light on the charge indicator has stopped flashing before you can consider the charge to be complete. That's not me saying that, that's Noco saying that in the manual. All right, and now what we're gonna say. Yeah, anyway, so interesting enough, that <laughs> it took 48 hours for the green light to stop. So all the other charges were all complete in 12 or 14 hours and the green light stopped flashing and the charge was complete according to the battery charger. This time it was 48 hours, 48 hours, which was uh, getting on for three times as long as the charges that had been happening in these other Noco Genius 5 charge cycles, right? So what was happening? We'll find out when we do the uh, parametric test. We'll get it into that flashy, flashy mode, and I'll show you exactly what was happening during that 48 hours it took. This is why the video is quite late, actually, um, because I've been waiting to get my hands on the battery charger to tear it down and do an analysis of it. And of course, um, yeah, I haven't been able to because it's been, been actually busy working away. So anyway, so this time the discharge was again 10 amps, 10, 10 amps, 10.6 uh, termination voltage, and we got 21.66. We actually almost improved things over the last charge. If you look here, we had 21.2, yeah, 21.2, 21.66. So it was a very long charge cycle. That was charge duration, should say there, 48 hours, because it was. Very, I kept coming, can I get on with this? Can I, I can't. Please finish. Anyway, it did. I was beginning to doubt whether it was actually ever going to stop doing its pulsing thing. And as to whether it finished it or it just timed out, I don't know. And we could test that, couldn't we? We could test that. So, well, you know, give up on a bad job and pretend it's charged or it actually completed it. So we'll do that. We'll um, we'll leave it trying to finish a charge off on the simulator and see whether it just goes to, oh, sod it. I'll go green. We'll find out with a bit of show business is going on there. And 21.66, which wasn't bad really. Um, certainly better than the last charge nine of the discharge cycle at 10 amps. So it's slightly improved. We had a 0.46 increase in capacity and on the 10 amp cycles, that was the only way. So it looks to me, one reasonable conclusion, again, you'll probably have your own views on this, that uh, one way to restore capacity might be a long, slow discharge. And if you think of a long, slow discharge, it will cover more completely the plates in lead sulfide or sulfate. And so the proper lead sulfate that should go on the plates, not the sort of the big, large crystalline, but the small dissolvable, reabsorbable uh, lead sulfate, which dissociates and creates a, recreates the acidity when charging, that would cover the plates more completely and I suppose, you know, maybe this long 48 hour charge that it needed was another way of charging it more slowly and as a consequence, more patiently reducing the sulfate. So I think one thing to try would be one of these discharges here, maybe a two and a half amp power discharge to 10.6 volts, then a really long, slow charge to see whether a long, slow charge would uh, more effectively restore some of the capacity, because that's one conjecture from these results, that you could draw that conclusion from these results here, that that might be the case. Uh, did want to know, really. So what do you think? What do you think? And a mixed bag, I hope you understand what's in there and the implications of it. I'm not quite sure I'm convinced about anything yet, except you know, we've got test size, a battery sample size of one, but it is a working battery that does work in the car, but goes flat really quickly because the capacity has dropped. So that seems to be a really good candidate. And certainly you know, in terms of the number of batteries out there, it's a good candidate for something which is starting to fail and might need a bit of a helping hand somewhere. But at the moment, we haven't found the magic bullet. We've run the, the repair mode uh, one, two, three times. And the most effective thing we found was a long, slow discharge at 2.5 amps down to 10.6. 
then a very long slow charge but we don't know what it was doing back up to full charge and then we did this charge again and we've actually got the first net increase in capacity and it's not due to the repair mode it's due to this discharge cycle we did here i think that's reasonable to conclude that's the case so anyway so i put this up because people are now asking me where's my video uh, they want the results i'm quite interested to get some more comments from you guys on the results and ideas so that i can incorporate it so now i'm about to start when i've got this video up I'm starting the parametric testing of the battery charger so we can see what voltage is and accuracy and how the temperature compensation works and so on and so forth. And then uh, hopefully I'll be able to see the back of this. But um, it is a learning experience and I, I think I've learned a lot and I've been surprised. I, I think <laughs> we can draw the conclusion no one really understands batteries properly as far as I can see. There's plenty of experts out there. But then, you know, there's experts in every field but experts can be debunked unless they're peer reviewed can't they so i'm just presenting the results you can make your own decisions uh, but that's that if you like it and you haven't seen the other two episodes and look at episode one episode two on, on the playlist because it'll put this much more into context for you. you can see what's been going on so thanks for watching and stand by for part four